Welcome to Holy Convocation 2024, Greater Dimensions. I'm Elder Jessica Rogers. And I'm Pastor Lorenzo Mosley. We're so excited to be joined tonight with um, Pastor Dr. Kim and Overseer Manley, who is a part of our fellowship. Amen. Amen. We're so excited to be here tonight. I mean, we are just ecstatic at what's going to happen on tonight. Yes, I'll tell you. Last night was unbelievable. Absolutely. So if you missed it last night, you got to get here tonight because we're going to an entire another level. Amen. So Greater we don't want dimensions. you to miss it. Yes, Greater Dimensions. Last night we started off with Bishop Younger. It was amazing. The house, we were floored with the glory of God. Just the man of God talking about renewing our foundation in God, going back to that first work, you know, laying that proper foundation because that's what's going to hold the church as the times prevail. Mm -hmm. so what I love about last night is that he actually reminded us of our responsibility to minister at home. Oh, and yes. one thing that I can say about you know, is coming together, doing this time as a fellowship for Holy Convocation, which is a reminder that we cannot neglect the home. And as, you know, you both mm -hmm. need I mean, the, the center of relationships. I oh, mean, yes. you know, the experts of relationships. What did you take away from that message last night? Well, we, you said something key uh, about it starts at home. And what we try to do as married couples, we try to live it in front of our children. Amen. And, and we know that home is where everything starts because that's the foundation. Because God is the God of family. And so what we were learning last night, that's where the foundation begins in the home because if you can do it in the home surely it can transfer over to other areas in your life and especially in ministry absolutely mm -hmm. and it just builds upon you know just the building blocks of any foundation you know you start out in there you know the first couple of years in building and so even with ministry the family how you build that foundation how you lay it is going to be closer to how your house stands and so we want the house to stand yes. and strong and so we're just blessed by what we shared on last night The word last night definitely recall, calls for a replay. Yeah. Get your notes out. Get your pen and paper out. There were nuggets upon nuggets last night. And that's just the first night of Holy Convocation. Night we, night. This is night one. That was night one. Night. We're <laughs> in night two. Come on. Make sure you join us on the live stream. Yeah. Thank you for joining in. We know you could have been anywhere, but we know you couldn't have been anywhere because you needed to be here. <laughs> I'm telling you, Holy Convocation 2024 is going to knock your socks off. Call your families yeah. in. Pick yes. Call the phone and have people join in on the stream. Join it. And if you can't do that, join us in person. Join us in person. There's still time to get into the house of the Lord. This is Greater Dimensions, Holy Convocation 2024. Greater Dimensions. We're going to a new place. And how we get to that new place is by doing the will of the Father. And our leader, uh, Chief Apostle Orrin Pullings, uh, has gotten a revelation from God. I mean, even in this time, you know, for him to, you know, set the bar for greater dimensions. I, I, I'm telling you, you know, we have to be um, just anticipating God to just show up in a greater way on tonight because the bar was set so high last night and the man of God just ministered and he told us something, he reminded us, you know, that we have to make sure that we don't leave the people at, at Passover. You know, we got we to get them <laughs> to Pentecost. To Pentecost. Pentecost. You know, when we all come together, we, we come together so that we all are on one accord and we're flowing in that anointing. And I'm just excited about what God is doing. Uh, can Pastor Manley, uh, Overseer Manley, can you just uh, chime in to, you know, when we think about the revelation that our chief apostle has received on greater dimensions, what does that speak to you about your ministry and in your family? What, what, what does that set the tone for, for your expectations for this year? Well, you know, it says to me that, you know, there's there's room for us to continue to, to go higher than that. You, you, you come to a place where you set, um, you, you do the work, but God is saying, let's go higher. Yeah. Let me take you higher. And so when we come to this, we come to conversation, it just opens your mind. It opens up your your understanding. And it gives you more room. Yeah. And it gives you the excitement. And, and you say something, it's, it's, it's expectation. Oh, yeah. It raises our level of expectation. And when we go back home, we got something to take. Oh, yeah. Right. Because when you think about God, God is a God of multiplication. And so when we come here, we know we can't stay the same. 
you always take something away. You always there's something being added to you when you come to these type of gatherings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's the anointing. It's the, when you come among the saints and the power oh, and the power. elevation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so we know God wants to take us higher because He's higher. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's really good. You know, greater dimensions. How do we access God? We have to come up higher. Yes. We have to. We have to come up higher. Greater dimensions. Now we talked all about Bishop Younger from last night because we were we were underneath the field, okay? Oh yeah. But what, what about tonight? We mm. have Archbishop Archbishop William Hudson the Third coming tonight, all the way out of Chicago. Mm. Yes. Now. so much potential that God has in store for the body of Christ and we are you know just going deeper and deeper and deeper and higher and higher in this in this move of God and we're so excited that God we're never, we're never in a position where we've just mastered it all oh no <laughs> Because when you think about it, when you come to these gatherings, we get to hear the heart of God yes. and the expect expectation that God has for his people. Yes. And so that automatically brings an excitement. Mm -hmm. yeah. This convocation, I mean, it's just, it's just packed full. Now, tonight we have um, Archbishop William Hudson III, but tomorrow we have none other than Oh my gosh, you know he brings, he's going to bring that word. He's going to break it down. We love Bishop Todd Hall here. And then on Saturday, we have our holy day. Okay, this is our day of elevation, where, our, where elevation is found our house, found our fellowship churches, and we are going to greater dimensions in God. Amen. Amen. How do you? blessed us with a leader among leaders, yes. you know, that he has a heart for the people, yes, he does. that he wants to see us you know, come up in God. He wants to see our churches blessed, see us reach our cities and be impactful in our cities. And so, you know, what more could you ask for? Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm just excited because I see it like a gift, you know, and a beautiful gift, you have to unwrap it a certain way. You just don't rip at it. Mm -hmm. But when you've been given a gift, you, un you, you, you take your time to open it and unpack to see what's on the inside of it. And I'm excited about what God has given us as the gift and the gift of our apostle, our yes. chief apostle, yes. that we get to see the unwrapping of God and how he's pouring into us and how he's pouring into the people of God. I'm just thankful for the gift of the chief apostle. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. We've been, I mean, we've been seeing that uh, just the just a move of God since since our last holy convocation. You know, what was what was the positiveness then, and just watching what God is doing now. And, and we talked about you know 
elevation. This is going to be the year where God is elevating some of our young adults. And I mean, yes. God is doing an amazing thing. Yes. And it has definitely been a, just a journey to watch and yes. see what God has been doing um, and birthing in our young adults. And I'm just excited for that. And, and this is a powerful generation. Mm -hmm. These young adults are going after, they're hungry for God, and they're saying, you know what, we're reimagining it. We're reimagining it different. You know, how we seek God, how we go after him. Maybe not what we're typically used to seeing, but it is authentic, and it is real, and they have, they have the power and the boldness of God. I love seeing them. I love seeing them go forth. I am so glad that so many of them are being elevated in this time. I'm glad you mentioned the young people. So it's interesting that they're seeing and we're coming to realize that they are so much needed in the body. Yes, oh, yes, yes. They are so much needed in the body in this end time work of God. And so God is strategically putting us all together you know, to advance his, his kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we're just grateful because we want to see the young the young ones take over. And, and rep yeah, because as we've laid a foundation, now they can take the, the reins and begin to build houses and build what God is saying in this hour. And I believe that we have end timers that are, that are, that are God has raised up. Yes, end yes. timers, you know, that are the John the Baptist of this day. You know, that they are the Elishas and the Elijahs of this day. They are the Deborahs of this day that are proclaiming and standing in place. And as the generations walk together, we will see God's glory hit the earth. I love that, Pastor Kim, as the generations walk together, meaning that we're all needed. Absolutely. The young, the old, the middle, yes. everybody, everybody is needed Absolutely. because God has a place and a time for us all. Yes. And this is that yes. now time. Last night he said, the time is now. Yes. The time is now. Time there, is a, there is a call. There is a call that we are to answer in the time. To answer that call is now. I'm telling you, Holy Convocation 2024, you don't want to miss it. Make sure if you get here, join us on live stream, you don't want to miss this. I will, I beseech you. You know, when they say it in the Bible, I beseech you, they meant something serious. I beseech you to go and play the replay from last night and make sure you tune in tonight. You don't want to miss it. The word of God is coming forth. I'm telling you, it's the, the atmosphere in here is almost pulsating. Yes. Like, I just... It's just amazing what God is doing. Amen. I was sharing with one of our newest uh, pastors that joined the fellowship that, you know, one of the things I love about just being a part of United Nations Church and uh, in our fellowship is that, I mean, the ground has always yes. been just, I mean, saturated <laughs> yes. in prayer, that we've been yes. praying and believing God for signs, miracles, and, and wonders. So I, I believe that even on tonight, you come in with this expectation for God to move in a mighty way. And then one thing that was uh, dropped last night, he said, you know, does the city know that you care? And as uh, Dr. Kim was mentioning, that, you know, we've had that, uh, that John the Baptist anointing, that I truly believe that God is raising up, I mean, a generation that's going to let the world know that the kingdom is here. Yeah. That God is showing up in an amazing way in our cities. And you know what's amazing is they are unafraid. They are unafraid, and they're not, uh, they're not a subject, or they're not uh, caught up in the church or religion of church. You know, you, you follow what I'm saying? They're, they're just free, and they're free in God to go and do what God is telling them to do. And I am just grateful. I have two boys myself that God is using my life, and I'm just excited to see the youth take territory for God's kingdom. So we can see the Lord filling our youth with his spirit. Yes. And, and they're being a witness to him, and so it's so encouraging so that they're, they're being used by God. Yes, amen. We're seeing our prayers being answered. Yes, amen. 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 All right, well, 2024 Holy Convocation United Nations Church, we're about to get started. Tune in. Don't drop off. Make sure you watch it all the way through because God is doing like something share. amazing. Comment. Tag, like, share, yes, comment. please. Holy Convocation. Bless someone's timeline. <laughs> Bless someone's timeline. 2024 United Nations Holy Convocation.
Hey there, come and be a part of our captivating U Nation Bible study every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. U Nation Bible Studies is a transformative experience designed exclusively for youth and young adults age 15 and above. Whether you're a beginner or well-versed in the Word, this is a safe space for everyone. Expect real-life discussions on relevant topics. Be sure to scan the QR code on the screen or follow at U Nation UNC on Instagram for more details. He may not show up before the fire, but he's ready to meet you in the fire. Just like he showed up in the fire with the Hebrew boys, he's going to show up in your fire right now and deal with your enemies. I want to let you know that God says, not only am I going to heal you, but I am going to make you whole. You will be as if you never went through what you went through. He didn't say I was one of the ways. He says, I am the way. Ain't no option. The truth and the life. You said, I'm living my truth. If you're living a truth outside of Jesus, your truth is a lie. I refuse to allow substitutes to live in my life like an assignment. If you're jealous of my progress, I got to cut away from you. The worst is over and the best is yet to come. Come on to me. some people that still believe the word of God, still believe what the Bible says. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Just tell your neighbor, I won't bow down. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, you ain't got it yet. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, that's a command. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Put your hands together and give God praise. Oh, he's worthy. Can somebody shout, he's worthy. Can somebody shout, he's worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down the same sun, he's worthy. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, we ain't waiting for another move. We moving now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you because you made ways out of no way we thank you for what you're doing in this hour and we tell you father you are welcome in this place you are welcome to walk them down these aisles you are welcome to touch every seat god you are welcome to move in our hearts but this is the day that the lord has made oh we shall rejoice that whatever they need meet the need God we come from north and south east and west looking for a word looking for answers and we tell you father you are welcome you are welcome we are open God we decree and declare every sick body shall be healed we decree and declare those that wounded in their spirit, we decree and declare that you mend the broken hearted. Go to our cities and heal God. Go to our neighborhoods and heal God. Go to our homes, God, and heal God. We know that you can. We know that you able. From the rising of the sun, you've been good. To the going down the same sun, you've been kind. We decree and declare greater dimensions is happening now. Greater dimensions is happening in our home. Greater dimensions is happening in our money. Greater dimensions is happening in our churches. Greater dimensions is happening in our cities. Yes, God. 
do it now, God. We can't wait another minute. We can't wait another second. We need you to move. 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 Do it now, God. Do it for your glory. And we tell you thank you. We tell you thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for opening up the doors. Every window. Thank you for opening up now. On this year of open doors. Open up, God. Open up, God. Open up. We know that you can. We trust your word. Touch our babies now. Touch our spouses now. Touch our nieces now. Touch our nephews now. Open up the window. Open up the door. Lord God. And we thank you, oh God. That things are shifting. Things are moving. Things are transforming. We are ascending. We are ascending. Because we are matches. We thank you, God. That our children are new. Our churches are new. Our memberships are growing. Yes, God. Meet every budget in our churches. We thank you for upgrade. We thank you for upgrade. New ideas. Because greater dimensions has taken place. And if you agree, somebody need a shout. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. We travel too far. We travel too far. Somebody said, God, open up. Open up, open up for greater now. Open up, open up, open up so we can walk greater, so we can talk greater, so we can live that greater. Open up. God, we need you to open up that our communities will see the glory in our churches. That when we open up for your will, God, the people that come in our churches will be changed for your glory. God, build an army. Build an army, God. Build an army. Start with our people. Start with our leadership. Build an army that can laugh like a dog. Give it to us, God. Give it to us, God. Give it to us, God. That will believe you for the big. I will believe you for the masses. Do it now. Somebody say, open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Do it now. Do it immediately. Do it immediately. And Father, we thank you that you're doing that lives are changed because they in our view. Lives are changed because they gave us the right hand of fellowship. God, open up, open up in our city that our government officials would know God is with us. Open up the leadership that will combine with the head and not the fight within God. Open up so we can build the kingdom of God. Use us, God. We need you to use us. Oh, yes. Let us be real. And everything we do, we rebuke phoniness. Come on, we rebuke it now. Give us the authentic power. Let the glory, 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 God. We will follow the fire. We'll follow the cloud. If the glory don't be there, we don't want to open another day. But if the glory that if your glory is there, souls can be saved, souls can be restored, souls can be renewed. Let the glory open up, God. Open up. Bless God right there. Oh, 
oh yeah, he's opened it up. I dare you to call your city and say, God, go to Davenport and open up God. If your pastor is here, I dare you to say, open up for my pastor. Open up for Sheep Apostle. Open up for Dr. Medina. Open up for their family. Open up for their sons. Open up for their daughters. Every fellowship church. God, we need your glory. We need your glory. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give him praise. I didn't hear a sound. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. He's causing men uh, to come in your bosom uh, and bless you. Uh, somebody say, open up, open up. Open up, open up. Open up, God. Send them in, God, uh, from the north, south, east, west. Send them in, God. That is a help and not a hindrance. Open up, God. Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah, 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 open up, open up, hallelujah, 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 pastor you done stirred something up up in here on tonight, hallelujah, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. I'm still on open up. Somebody open up your mouth. Somebody yield your spirit to him tonight. Come on, somebody, come on. Come on, open up your mouth and give God glory. The spirit of the Lord is already here. We got a pump, we got a prime. Somebody open your mouth and give the king the glory that his name deserves. He's a good, 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 good God. He's a great, great, great God that deserves a great praise. If you can't praise him for nothing else, praise him for the new mercies that you received this morning. The mercies that we didn't deserve. Ah, 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 I feel like running this tonight. Y'all excuse me. Somebody look at heaven and say, fill the room. Come on, let me hear you say, fill the room. Everybody clap your hands. Hey. Come on, everybody say. Hey. 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 Song says, there is a sound, a sound from heaven that changes. Stop my prayer.
special in store for his people on tonight. So what I want you to do tonight, is anybody in expectation? You know, last night that I heard they were talking about having the Amazon and the Prime with the packages being delivered. Let me tell you something. When you know that you've got that tracking number and your package is on the way, and especially if it's something really nice that you ordered. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, tonight, special delivery. I just believe that God has a breakthrough on tonight with your name on it. Come on, let's loosen up a little bit because tonight we come to welcome you. We are family tonight. We give honor to our Chief Apostle Bishop Oren Pullings and First Lady Dr. Medina Pullings. Hallelujah. All the clergy, saints, and friends tonight. Amen. But I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go and just hug three people tonight that you did not come with and tell them I'm in expectation mode. I'm in expectation mode. I'm expecting God to do something great on tonight. I'm expecting God to do a miracle tonight. I'm expecting a breakthrough tonight. I'm expecting deliverance tonight. I'm expecting greater dimensions tonight. I'm in expectation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, greater tonight. Greater tonight. Is anybody ready to go higher tonight? Is anybody ready to go higher tonight? Come on and put your hands together and give God praise. Woo! Because the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So tonight, you're free tonight to give them glory. We welcome you tonight to give them glory. You are free tonight. Come on, give them glory in the place of tonight. We gonna tear the roof off of this place. Come on, where my people at that's ready to tear the roof off this place. On tonight, we gonna stand on kingdom business on tonight. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, we standing on kingdom business tonight. We're going to new levels. We going to new dimensions. We're going to new atmospheres. Come on, how many of y'all are ready to go with me? How many of y'all are excited? Open up your mouth and shout glory in this place. Open up your mouth and shout victory in this place. Come on, uncommon favor, uncommon breakthroughs, uncommon miracles is happening in your row. Come on, look down your row and say, I'm ready for a breakthrough on tonight. I'm ready for a miracle on tonight. I'm ready for more than what God has in store for me on tonight. And I'm ready, 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 I'm ready. And you are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And tonight we're going to go even greater, 
greater dimensions. Every round goes higher and higher. Amen. So tonight we want to uh, let you know we want to welcome tonight everyone that's here to God be the glory. And we're excited tonight because we have in the building tonight with us Archbishop William Hudson III. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate because this man of God is going to deliver the word of God on tonight. Amen. 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 Can you say Friday? Amen. Friday, Friday, Friday. We will have two powerful workshops beginning at 12 noon. Amen. Our first class will be evangelism that will be taught by none other than Apostle Lisa Vini. Come on, let's celebrate. That's one of our own. Can you get excited? Because even in tomorrow's session, I want you to come out. Tomorrow's session is going to be effective because you're going to get strategies for effective soul winning. It's one thing to soul win, but it's another thing to be effective. Amen? Amen. And then at 1.30, we'll have our prophetic class. And it's going to be taught by the apostle, the very own apostle Paul R. Day. Come on, put your hands together. Understanding the prophetic. To God be the glory. Everything, we can understand that God is a God who speaks now. Amen. And everything he does is now. But sometimes understanding why what he has said now hasn't happened now is how we understand the prophetic. Amen. And so he's going to teach us and show us how to understand what is prophetic and what is not. There's a thin line between prophetic and witchcraft. Oh, come on, somebody. And so we're going to get understanding in this hour so we can stand and be sound in this hour. Amen. Amen. And then Friday also at 5 p.m. will be our credentialing session. Amen. And so we want you to come out at 5 p.m. Amen. At 7 p.m. tomorrow night, can you get excited? Dr. Bishop, the praiseologist himself, Todd Hall, will be in the building. Come on, let's give God praise. Y'all know what he's going to come and do. I advise you to make sure you bring your flats and your running shoes because you're going to need them tomorrow. And then on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we're asking all clergy to be here to line up. Amen. As a matter of fact, we want you to be here at 8 o'clock so you can be prepared to get yourselves dressed. Line up will begin at 9 a.m. And then Saturday at 10 a.m., our official service with our chief apostle, Orrin K. Pullings. Amen. He'll be delivering the word of God. Amen. And then on Saturday night, Y'all ought to get excited for this. I'm excited. On Saturday night, we will have our youth and young adult service. Hallelujah. Our teens are going to bring it. And let's get excited for them as they rock out for Jesus. Amen. And then on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., it will be our closeout service. And we have a very special guest who's going to deliver the word. So you don't want to miss it. You want to be here on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Let's govern ourselves according to these announcements. May God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That don't sound like a praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. That sounds like we almost there. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That means a hallelujah. That means a thank you, Jesus. That means a glory to God. That means a hand clapping. That means a foot stomping. That means a hand wave. Come on and let's give him the best praise that we can. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah, now this is sounding like convocation. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor, oh magnify the Lord with me uh, because God's going to do something in this room tonight. Uh, oh, magnify uh, the Lord with me. Uh, breakthrough in this room tonight. Uh, magnify uh, the Lord with me. Uh, if you're sitting on this road, that means you're going to be healed tonight. Oh, magnify uh, the Lord with me. Uh, if you're sitting on this road, uh, that means a miracle is going to hit your address. Uh, come on and give God praise in advance. Data Hall of Miracle Sign Wonders is hitting us tonight. Now open up your mouth if you believe it. Oh, I believe in her tonight's glory. I 
I believe in the now thing. I believe God's going to do it tonight. He's not waiting till tomorrow, but God's going to do it tonight. You came for the right night. This is your right time. This is your right season. This is your right hour for the blessing and the breakthrough. I dare you to prepare your belly by shouting, thank you. I need some John the Baptists. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord. Uh, John the Baptist prepared the way for signs, wonders, and miracles. Who's the John the Baptist on your road tonight? Come on, look down your road. Say, do we got a John the Baptist? Huh, do we got a fire starter tonight? Do we got a praiser tonight? Do we got a believer tonight? Do we got a faith in this road tonight? Because just because I'm sitting in this row, and just because you're sitting in this row, the Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, and two can put ten thousand to flight. Well, the devil is in trouble in this row. I dare you to open up your mouth and give God praise, and give the devil a fit tonight by praising God and clapping your hands. Give him a nervous breakdown. I dare you to wear the devil out tonight. No weapon. No weapon formed against this section shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against this section shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against this section shall be able to prosper. No weapon, no weapon. I dare you to open up your mouth and release your weaponry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Let me help you out tonight. It's called Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Glory! Yeah. All right. Some of us, we used to dignify church. We used to being cute and not sweat tonight. But I don't know about you, I need a miracle. I don't know about you, I need a breakthrough. I need for my family to be delivered tonight. I need for my children and my children's children and my children's children children to walk in a miracle tonight. So tonight we didn't come to play no games. We're about to move, but I dare you to open up your mouth for your family, for your bloodline, for your children, for your church, for your city, for your region, for this country, for this nation. Open! But listen, somebody say greater dimensions. Greater dimensions is our portion tonight. Clap those hands if you receive it. Hallelujah. Well, I got an announcement. The devil's in trouble tonight because he got some kingdom generals in the building. Tonight, We've been blessed to have from United Nations Fellowship these amazing apostles and bishops and pastors and overseers. Can we give God a praise for all of them? Oh, we can do better than that. I said the devil is in trouble. And I want us to give us thunderous applause to the newest couple in our fellowship all the way from Momentum Church. Pastor Barrett and his beautiful wife. Come on and bless God for them. Somebody say, it's the momentum for me. I want you to welcome all the way from Louisiana, Bishop Edward Hayes and Lady Chantel Hayes. Come on, bless God for them. I want you to welcome all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, past Bishop Antonio Booker and Pastor Marcelo Booker. That would be us. I want you to thank God all the way from the city of New York, none other than Bishop Stephen White and Pastor Kelly White. Come on, bless God for them. I told y'all the devil's in trouble tonight. Can we thank God for this kingdom general who's always right here in Richmond, Virginia and around the world, Bishop Joe Carpenter, come on. 
Oh God, can we thank God for the men of God that travels the breadth and width of this country and these nations? Apostle Paul Day. Can we thank God for the DMV? They tearing up the DMV by storm. Pastor Lorenzo Mosley and co-pastor Mosley. Come on, bless God for them. Can we thank God? Here it is, North Carolina again for the overseer. Roy Manley and Dr. Kim Manley as they're here. Woo, another DMV specialty. Pastor Leslie Beanie and Apostle Lisa Beanie are here tonight. Come on. And here we go, North Cackalack is in the house tonight from North Carolina, Bishop Johnny Brooks and Apostle Demetrio Brooks. Come on and make some noise for them. Yeah, woo. And we have a dual anointing tonight, all the way from Connecticut and VA, the two up and two down, Bishop Rodney White and Apostle Stephanie White. Come on. Yes, and one of our newest fellowship members all the way from Alabama, Pastor Alicia Cooper. Come on, bless God for her. And how many know we do big things in Texas, y'all? We do big things in Texas. None other than Apostle Lee Martinez and Prophetess Martinez. Come on, bless God for them. And I heard somebody say that Florida is in the house. None other than Bishop Henry Jackson and Pastor Barbara Jackson. Can we thank God for Florida? There's some power in North Carolina. Y'all need to come to North Carolina because we have Apostle Neil Harris and Apostle Ann Harris from North Carolina. Come on, bless God for them. And all the way, they hail from the city of Georgia, but they preach around the world. None other than Bishop Jonathan Reed and Pastor Shonada Reed. Come on, bless God for them. Last but certainly not least, can we thank God for the presiding prelate of United Nations International Church Fellowship? And I'm going to ask that you would get on your feet as we praise God for our chief apostle, Bishop Orrin K. Pullins Sr. And the first lady of these proceedings, Dr. Medina Simone Pullins. Come on, bless God for her. Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. We can. Hallelujah. And I want you to praise God for your neighbor to your left and right. Because what God is dropping in your pla in this place tonight, you're going to need help to carry it out of here. Say, neighbor, you going to help me tonight? It's called the overflow. Now put those hands together and clap those hands for your neighbor. As praise and worship comes and take us to the next level. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, to God. Come on, let me see you clap your hands tonight. Let's worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come on.
There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Hey. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Come on, let me hear it in the house. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. an opportunity for each of us to participate. Say, I'm a willing participant, and I'm a cheerful giver. Uh, would you stand to your feet? I know you just uh, finished praising and worshiping, but we are going to worship in giving on tonight. Can you say amen? So can we all stand? I want you to do something for me. I want you to sow with me. Somebody say, I'm sowing with you tonight. Those that are streaming, I want you to sow with me tonight a $33 greater dimension seed. Somebody say why. Somebody say why. Because at the age of 33, Jesus' ministry went to greater dimensions. And so I want you to tap into that greater dimension seed tonight. As we soar higher, 
we're sowing and God is blessing. So if you've got that seed or you're preparing that seed right now, if you're sowing by way of technology, the ways to give are going to be on the screen. But I want everyone to sow and I want everyone to step out and hit the altar. We're going to use as a sign of contact, just waving your, your device, whatever technology device you're using. Uh, and then we're going to sow, put those envelopes, put those seed on the ground. So can you get excited about giving tonight? I'm excited every time we get to cast our bread on the waters. Somebody say, the water is troubled, and the anointing is going to do the work. Can you just begin to come, bring your seed forward, bring your devices forward, and just begin to wave as you sow that $33 greater dimension seed. I dare you, as you're putting it down and waving, say, I'm sowing into greater dimensions. I'm sowing into greater dimensions. I'm excited for what God has in store for each and every one of us, for you, you, and you. Somebody say there's a super anointing in this convocation that's doing something for you, you, and you. Amen. As you're sowing tonight, God, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the cheerful givers. God, we thank you for the obedient givers. We thank those that are touching and agreeing by way of waving their devices and sowing that $33 greater dimension seed. Those that are online, sow that seed and watch God work in your life. Greater dimensions as we move forward. Shout greater dimensions. Hallelujah. How many ready for the word tonight? Greater dimension, we're going to higher heights tonight, deeper depths tonight. Lord, we honor your presence in this house. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Burn within us. Shift your people. We love you, Jesus. Somebody just slip those hands up right where you are tonight. One desire, thirsty for you, thirsty for you, you are ours. One desire, only you can satisfy, only you can satisfy. It up so you are, you are one desire. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Say 12. 
praying church but we're seeking the heart of the father and it's now time is now it's now it's now to dwell it doesn't matter what church you go to what fellowship you're a part of god i want to please you i want to please you tonight i want to please you yes our hearts are raised to you we wait on you will you come in the room will you come in the room say our hearts are raised to you we wait on you
amen, amen. Just remain standing. I come to introduce this great man of God, this great archbishop. He is a, a spiritual brother of mine. We share the same spiritual father. We were consecrated as bishops on the same day. And to see where God has brought him today is simply amazing. Let's thank God for Bishop William, Archbishop, should I say, William Hudson. He is the pastor of the Powerhouse Church in Chicago. Powerhouse. And that's a great name because he is a powerhouse. He's got a great woman by his side. Let's thank God for First Lady Hudson, everybody. A woman of style, grace, excellence, and anointed. But I'm excited that he's going to come and share with us tonight. And El Pas uh, Bishop Booker was to introduce him tonight, but I cut Bishop Booker short. And I said, no, I got to talk about him tonight because... When I introduce people, I always make them remember where they came from. A lot of y'all don't know, he was on a TV show years ago, Amen. He was a little Reverend Johnny as a little boy on Amen as a preacher and then ended up growing up and actually becoming a bishop and a preacher. It's amazing. We have a true gift here tonight in Richmond, Virginia, y'all. And so I want us to honor him, and I want us to thank God for him, and I want us to receive the word of God, receive God's messenger, receive God's vessel, receive God's man for tonight. I want to introduce the some and present to others the bishop, the archbishop of the Pilgrim Assemblies International, Archbishop William Hudson III. Let's receive him now. Clap your hands. Let's thank God for him. Oh! 
10 seconds. I like y'all. I'm on working. I want to praise God for the greatest bishop, the chief apostle, the presiding bishop, the miracle man. Y'all better make some noise for your leader, Bishop Oren Pullis. Come on, let's thank God for his awesome wife, Dr. Medina Pullins. Y'all make some noise. To all of the apostles, the bishops, the pastors, the first ladies, y'all make some noise. Every five-fold ministry gift. I am so excited to be here on tonight. I am so proud of my brother. He is an awesome leader. I'm talking about Bishop Pullins. He's an awesome teacher. Are you glad about your leader? Are you glad about your Dr. Pullins? Listen, I knew Dr. Medina when she was quiet. She didn't say nothing, but that day is over. Amen. Look at what the Lord has done all over the world. United Nations. If you love your pastors, clap your hands. Celebrate them. They are awesome example of a kingdom couple demonstrating families. Let's celebrate them. Demonstrating ministry. Demonstrating the marketplace. Y'all ain't clapping loud enough. I'm talking about your apostles, your leaders, and what God is doing in their lives. Y'all help me celebrate the finest woman in the room. My wife is here, Pastor Andrea Hudson. Y'all help me celebrate my wife. It was so funny. And you know, my wife, she'd be going on her trips and not going mine. We'd be going, the dog be wondering, where we going now? So, uh, we got here to the airport, and the lady ran out the stove. And she said, Hoo! She ran and grabbed me and hugged me and held me. And my wife was looking like, who is that woman? I said, everything's all right. She watches on the TV. Amen. Crystal, you here? Crystal Sauls, where you? Hey, Crystal. Y'all clap for my friend from the airport. <laughs> she said, I'm an online member. Every time I come to Virginia, I don't know how Crystal see me. I bless you. My friends are here. Bishop Y. Eric Lee, y'all make some noise for the bishop, the presiding bishop. Y'all shout for him. I love you, man. My new friend, Pastor Taylor Keith, 
and his lovely wife. Y'all stand up. These are my new pilgrim pastors. Clap your hands. Prophet Andre Frazier is in the house. I know his bishop was here last night. He drove back and drove back again. Bless you, Prophet. Shireen, you here from the powerhouse. Where you at, Shireen? Hey, Shireen, God bless you, babe. That's my daughter, y'all. All right. I'm so mad at Bishop S.Y. Younger. I don't know what to do. I just stopped looking at him last night. I texted him. I said, I'm never speaking to you again. That man shook this place in the power of the Holy Ghost. I love him. Amen. And tomorrow night, don't miss tomorrow. The prophet's going to be in the house. Amen. Let's just lift our hands and just keep worshiping the God. God, the spirit of the Lord is already here and his glory is rising. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. You Just lift your hands. If you're seated, just lift your hands worshiping. Let me hear the sound of your voices. God, we love you. We praise you. I like this team. Y'all sang my songs. I had to get another one. Lift your hands. Worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, fill the room with his presence. Come on, let me hear those voices. On YouTube, I need y'all to type in praises. Type in hallelujah. We bow before him. Hallelujah. I want you to take your body and worship him. The word worship is proskuneo in the Greek. It means to kiss towards. Come on, take your hands and blow a kiss to God. Kiss towards him. Don't act like you ain't never kissed nobody. Come on, kiss towards him. Kiss towards him. Now let's bow before him. The angels bow. They say that he's holy. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, we worship. His glory. Up just to say that that's the whole song we worship you now come on we can say it together his glory is his glory is rising up. we bless your name king we bless your name say and you are here and his glory is rising Everybody shout it out in this place. Let's prophesy his glory. His glory is rising up. The glory is going in somebody's house tonight. They're watching on YouTube, and the glory is going in your kitchen, in your living room. Come on, decree and declare it. His glory is rising. His glory, his glory is rising up. We bless your name, God. Hey, come on, pull on him. We bless your name, God, and you are here. Say his power. His power is rising up. We seek for you. Hey, we want you. We want you. We want you. Hey, somebody shout. His power is rising. And his power is rising up. And we seek your face hey even in this place and we love you jesus we love you jesus his power his power is rising up. come on one more time let's decree and declare something supernatural is happening in this house we're gonna say it's healing it's healing his healing is rising up yes his healing and it's Somebody shout hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. It's healing. It's healing. It's rising. Up. Now give him a shout and worship him just for two minutes. I need some of y'all to move out of your seat. Come on up to the altar with your hands lifted. Come on with praise on your lips. 
just come to the altar. I need worshipers. I need worshipers. I need worshipers. I need worshipers. Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Come on, we want you. Lift your hands. Talk to God. Tell him I want you. I want you. I praise you. I worship. I bless you. Come on, feel the room. Feel the room with the glory of the Lord. Come on, cry out to him. Cry out to him. Hey, Shandela de Bosata. Hey, we're in the prayers of the Lord. We're in the prayers and serve the Lord. We're in the prayers and serve the Lord. We're in the prayers and serve the Lord. Come on, worship. We're in the prayers. Come on, we're in. We're in the Worship him, worship him, come on. Oh Rabakatata. Edalabo Sataka. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, Virginia. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is giving you a makeover, a Holy Ghost makeover. God gives me these words for you. I'm healing your image. I want y'all to point to the woman of God and say, God is healing your image. You're working and you're serving. God is using you but there's yet some things that need to be healed and need to be made whole God says this is the year I'm gonna show you who you are I'm gonna show you the fullness of your purpose he erases the brokenness you've covered it up but God says all residue shall be removed tonight I'm healing you I'm going to use you to heal women your story is going to touch and break chains. The enemy does not want you in the house of God because you are dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. You're not afraid. You have boldness. You have power. And God said, I'm going to use this bold anointing to touch people. I see people coming out of prison. I'm talking about spiritual prisons. I see people coming out of spiritual prisons and receiving healing because of your ministry and because of your anointing. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, in the next three months, April, I want you to breathe in and breathe out for April. Yes, Lord. May, let's do it with a breathe in and breathe out for May. Woo! And June, breathe in and breathe out for June. July 1st, I prophesy, you're going to be a whole nother woman. Mm. It's your new beginning. Three months of surgery. Three months of healing. <laughs> hey! And God says, watch yourself. You will not recognize yourself. July 1st. Now God let the anointing rest on the woman of God and I call forth every dead thing, every dry thing, every vision that she's given up on, every dream that she stopped believing in. Father, we thank you that this is an hour of fresh oil. This is an hour of fresh oil. Come on, in the name of Jesus, and we give you praise. Now somebody shout for the woman of God. Somebody shout for the woman of God. Did you write the book already? Did you write a book? 
What are you waiting on? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I didn't mean to hit you so hard, but pick up us up. Lift your voice and shout. Open your mouth and shout. I feel this presence. Lift your hands. I hear the Spirit of the Lord says, there's healing in your mind tonight. There's been heavy attacks against your mind. It's a demonic force that has been fighting against your mind. It brings confusion. It comes in your dreams. It torments you. And tonight it's broken. And I decree and declare that your mind is free. God says, peace. You've been looking for peace and haven't been able to find it. You've been carrying weights and carrying loads. But God says he lifts this burden off of your shoulders. Ooh, and he lifts this weight. That's it. Go ahead and holler out. We need that. That's your deliverance. Come on. Come on. That's your deliverance. Come on. Hey, don't be ashamed. Keep up, sound man. Let's go. Ho! Lift the load. Break the tormenting spirit. Break the tormenting spirit. Break the tormenting spirit. Every witchcraft devil, I curse you, I cast you. I break your power in the name of Jesus. I set you free in the name of Jesus. The peace of God, the rest of God, the wholeness of God from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up a praise and shout. Come on, praise him. Shout to the king. Shout to the king. The anointing is upon you. I'm going to use you. You will be creative. You will be unique. Stop trying to be like everybody else. Stop trying to fit in. There's a special grace. There's a special glory. There's a special power that is on your life. Look at me. God said it's time Shh. for you to come forth. You're waiting on two chains to break. But God said, if you give me a yes, they will come off automatically. God said, I'm going to use you like you are. And on your way, I see those 10 lepers. Glory to God. He said, go show yourself to the priest. Hallelujah. Go show yourself to the priest. And on their way, they were made whole. Some of y'all waiting to do your ministry. You're waiting to come into your call. You're too creative to wait. God won't show yes now. Let him fix the rest. Let him pray about it. Let him do it. Huh? Shh. I'm a little violent tonight. Y'all excuse me. I'm pushing and hitting and getting on. But I promise you, he ain't going to be the same. Open your mouth and pray. I can't hear y'all. I can't hear you. Come on, Virginia. Come on, Virginia. Come on, Virginia. Come on, Virginia. Pick him up. Come on, Virginia. Come on, Virginia. Lord says too much creativity you're more creative than you ever can imagine there's millions of dollars in your hands because of the gifts that are locked on the inside of you and I break every habit I break it it will no longer hold you God loves you just as you are give them a yes and start moving huh you go to this church where you go yeah in Jesus name Yes, every creative gift, I call it for. Woo! Every creative gift. Every creative gift. This man, I'm telling you, writing, creative writing, in the name of Jesus, creative sounds, in Jesus' name, I call them forth. Clap your hands and praise him. Glory to God. Come on, give him glory. Mm -hmm. Hey! Hey, hey. Glory to God. On your way to your seat, wave at somebody and tell them the Holy Ghost is here. Come on. I need you to tell them the Holy Ghost is here. Anything can happen tonight. The Holy Ghost is here. I need y'all to open your mouth and shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Come on and clap your hands and praise. Come on, sanctify people. Come on. 
tongue talking people. It's holy convocation. Open your mouth and say yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Let your glory fill the place. Let your power fill the place. He's already here. You've been praying for a breakthrough. You've been praying for deliverance. You've been praying for strength. He's in the room right now. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. Clap your hands and shout one good time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor and this glory is coming to your church. Come on, prophesy. And this glory that's here in United Nations is coming to your church. Come on, point to your pastor and say, and this glory is coming to our church. For the glory of God. Yes. All right. Y'all can be seated. I love this church. I need your prayers tonight. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Woo. You are welcome in this place. Thank you, Jesus. You are welcome in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we love you. First Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 5. I want you to read it with me. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. And he came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. I want to preach tonight greater dimensions. Wave at your neighbor and say, the church is moving in greater dimensions. I need you to talk to me all night. Look behind you and say, the church, the church is moving in greater dimensions. If you receive that, clap your hands and give God praise for greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my father. A dimension, a dimension is a measurable extent. A dimension is the length, the width, the height, and the depth. It is a measurement. And God is calling his church out of the shallow into the deep. He's calling his church from immaturity to maturity. He's calling us off milk into meat and strong meat. Somebody shout a greater dimension. I want you to write down the next word he gave me. It is capacity, capacity. As your dimension is growing and becoming greater, you must increase in capacity. What is capacity? It, it is the maximum amount that something can contain. It is maximum output. It is the amount that something can produce. 
It's an individual's mental or physical ability, skill, or aptitude. I prophesy that God is increasing your capacity. The capacity of your ministry, of your church, he is increasing your capacity. Your weight is going to be heavier. Your rank is going to be stronger. Because you are operating in a greater dimension, your capacity has to be increased. I'm talking in the Holy Ghost. The next word he gave me is productivity, productivity. He says a greater dimension. Somebody shout dimension. Dimension pulls you into capacity. Somebody shout capacity. And then he said productivity. Wave at your neighbor and say, this is a productive year. God has increased your capacity and expanded your dimension for you to experience productivity like never before. What does it mean to produce? To bring into existence, to give birth to, to make, to create, to be fruitful. Productivity, produce, produce. You will no longer waste time working, working without results. You will no longer waste time putting out energy, tired and frustrated, and nothing is happening. It feels like you're spinning your wheels and you're going nowhere. You take one foot forward and five feet backward. But God is saying, I am taking you into this new dimension, and in this dimension, there shall be increased capacity, and there shall be unusual productivity. I just prophesied to you, and you didn't even know it. Shake somebody and shout unusual productivity. Unusual productivity. I looked up the word pro produce, or product, product, P-R-O-D-U-C-T. Pro means in favor of. Pro means in favor of. P E-R-O, the prefix, means in favor of, but duck, D-U-C-T, means something flowing through, something flowing through. Wave at your neighbor and tell them you are a product, you are a product. God made you and he put something in you. He imparted something in you. It is not supposed to stay at the same place, but he put it in you to flow through you. You are a product. I'm going to say it again. Wave at somebody say, you are a product. You're waiting on a product. God said, you are a product. You're searching for a product. God says, you are the product. I put something in you that's going to flow through you, that's going to move out of you, that's going to bring prosperity back to you because you are the product. Ah, wave at your neighbor and say, I see blessings in you. God has hid some things inside of you. Can't nobody touch it. Can't nobody stop it. Can't nobody hinder it. Wave your hand and shout, I am the product. I am. I am. I am the product. He's gifted you like nobody else. He stamped his seal of approval on you like nobody else. Something God planted in me is flowing through me. It's coming out of me. Me. It's going to bring wealth back to me. Y'all help me. Look at your neighbor and say, God planted something in you. You got to let it flow through you. You got to let it pass out of you. It's going to come back to you and bring wealth. Because you are the product. You are the product. Productivity. Wave at your neighbor and say, in this next dimension, your capacity is being increased. Your productivity is being increased. And then God gave me the word strategy, strategy. In this next dimension, there will be another level of capacity, another level of productivity, and another level of strategy. The Lord says, you will not just do things to be doing things. You will not just have church to be having church. You will not just be having meetings to be having meetings. God says, this is the year that you're going to flow and function in strategy. Somebody shout greater dimension, greater dimension. Last year, I was doing a whole lot of stuff. But this year, before I took a step, I'm going to plan it out. I'm going to think it through. I'm going to hear from heaven because strategy is a plan of action that is designed to achieve a major goal. A strategy is a careful plan or method. A strategy is a plan of operation and movements. My movements are going to be carved out. 
out. My movements are going to be playing out. God is not a happenstance God. He's a strategist. He planned Jesus on the cross before the foundation of the world. He put him on the cross. He shed his blood before the foundation of the world. He put Mary inside of Joseph before the world began. He's a strategist. He had a plan in heavens. He had a plan in the eternity before he put it in time. He had a plan in heavens before he placed it on earth. He's a strategist. God says every one of your moves are going to be strategized in this season. He has given you arrangement. He's given you a blueprint. He's given you a master plan. He's given you a design. I need some pastors to open up your mouth. I prophesy God has given you a strategic design, a strategic arrangement, a strategic master plan, a strategic blueprint. Somebody open your mouth and praise him because he's downloading strategy to you right now. Y'all ain't loud enough. Y'all ain't loud enough. I said praise him. What you did last year that did not work, it's going to work this year because your movements shall be planned by God. Your movements shall be ordered by God. You're going to flow in this year with strategy. So God says we're in a greater dimension. Y'all in this dimension with me? He's increasing our capacity. He's increasing our productivity. He's causing us to operate in strategy. The church is moving in a greater dimension. Now let's talk about this church because we can't talk about greater dimensions without talking about the church. Let me help you. The church is not a social club. The church is not a community center. We do community work, but it's not a community center. The church is not just a meeting place where people meet and greet and find each other. The church is not just a networking center. It's not, it wasn't built for you to network and, 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 and publicize your business and meet new clients. The church is not your networking place. The church is not the place where you come to be platformed so you can get close to somebody in leadership and they can put you up and you can get more likes and get more business and get more money. Y'all won't help me. The church is not a Facebook live and a cash app. Excuse me. Tell your neighbor the church, the church, the church, the church, the church. The church church is not the place where we come to get our needs met only the church is not where you come just to get a word the church is not where you come just to get your praise on but the church is the ecclesia somebody shout the ecclesia it is a group of called out ones it is a group of people who could not come out by themselves who could not come out on their own but God had to call us out he called us out of darkness darkness into the marvelous light he called us out of sin into righteousness he called us out of ignorance into revelation he called us out of Egypt into Canaan he called us out of slavery into freedom he called us out of instability into stability he called us out of our history into our destiny he called us out of our past into our future wave at somebody and tell them I'm sitting right here because he called me out I wanted to come out but couldn't get myself out couldn't stop doing what I was doing on my own couldn't shake it couldn't let it loose but he was with me when I was at the hotel getting motel he was with me when I was at the bar drinking Hennessy he was with me when I was in sin and in a mess and he called me out he didn't wait to get in my life until I got everything together but God was in your life when you were in a mess God was in your life when you were rebellious God was protecting you with your silly self when you drank and got drunk and you made it home safely. You ought to praise him when you had sex with the wrong person, but he let you get up and you didn't get sick. Y'all quiet on me. Somebody ought to testify and say, I can't tell you my whole story, but God didn't wait to get with me when I came to the altar. He was with me in my mess. He was protecting me. He was covering me. He was... And it was his call on me. That's the reason I made it out. Can I get y'all to shout for 30 seconds? Look at somebody and tell them, I made it out. I need y'all to think about, he could have left you in there. Hi, glory, hada. The enemy didn't want you to come out. I need somebody to praise God because he made you come out. The church... Is the ecclesia, the called out ones. We've been called out. 
The church is the body of Christ. Don't let the world tell you what to do, pastor. They don't know what we're supposed to do. You are the church. They ain't even saved. They don't even have the Holy Ghost. And you're feeling guilty because you're not doing what they tell you to do on Facebook. You've been born of the Spirit. You've been born of the water. We don't let sinners tell us what to do. They need to get saved. Now that's what you need to do. Huh? Amen. The church is the body of Christ. According to James 2 and 2, the church is the assembly. According to 1 Timothy 3.15, the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. According to 1 Peter 2 and 5, the church is a spiritual house. According to Isaiah 56 and 7, the church is the house of prayer. According to Ephesians 2 and 22, the church is the habitation of God. According to Genesis 28 and 17, the church is Bethel, the gate of heaven. According to Ephesians 2, the church is the household of faith. The church, according to 1 Peter 2, is filled with peculiar people. According to Ephesians 2, it does not have members, but it has fellow citizens. That's why y'all messed up because you're trying to be members and he called you to be a citizen. The church, according to Romans 8, never, this ain't no health club, it's the kingdom. You're a citizen, not a member. Come on here. The church, according to 1 Peter 5, is God's heritage. The church, according to 1 Corinthians 3, is a holy temple. The church, according to 1 Peter 5, is the flock of God the church according to 1 Corinthians 3 is God's building tell somebody this church this church is moving in greater dimensions now the devil thought he could stop the church because the first type of a church was Adam 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 was the first type of church Adam was a body that God created. He made him in his image. He made him in his likeness. He gave him dominion. He formed him from the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. The atheist got to praise him. The agnostic has to praise him. The Buddhist has to praise him because the breath in your body doesn't matter what you believe, doesn't matter if you accept him or reject him the breath in your body was put in you from a God Shaka, who breathed into you the breath of life and so God formed Adam he was the first representation of God on the earth the first type of a church hallelujah he placed him in the garden of Eden he gave him a place ladies don't you marry no man if he don't have a place before God gave Adam Adam a wife, he gave him a place. I wish I had a Holy Ghost church. No, we ain't moving in with my mama. The devil is a lie. And we ain't moving in together, shacking up. Y'all don't even know what that is. It's a sin. Glory to God. But the Bible says he gave him a place. And the place was called Eden. Eden, Eden means the presence of God. Eden means the spot. The spot. Eden means the open door. Eden means a moment. And Satan got angry because the first type of a church was in the presence of God. The first type of a church was in the spot of God. The first type of a church was in the open door of God. This is Eden in the Hebrew. The first type of a church was in the moment of God. And Satan attacked Adam. He attacked the first type of a church. He sent the, the enemy came in the form of a serpent. Oh, he was a coward, uh, too afraid to come like himself. Demons can get in people and in animals, but he went into a serpent and he got close to something that was close to him. Wave at your neighbor and tell him if the devil can't get to you, he'll get to something close to you. If he can't discourage you, he'll use your children to do it. He'll use your spouse to do it. He'll use your job to do it. He couldn't get to Adam because he had too much authority, but but he went to Adam's wife mercy and used her to get to him I wish I had a church and Adam ate the forbidden fruit and sin came into the world the devil thought it was over for the church the devil thought he had won that he had the victory but Jesus said make me a body I'm coming down in the volume of the book in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us Jesus the second type of a church 
born of a virgin, made himself a body, came through 40 and two generations, tempted with the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, but he did not sin. He died, didn't he die? He died on the cross. He said, it is finished, but it's not over. Good God Almighty, Satan thought he had him because he was crucified on the cross. Y'all, Lord, have mercy. Satan thought it was over for the church. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is a type of a church. He is the body of Christ. They put him in the grave Friday. He stayed in the grave Saturday and on Sunday. But wait before I get to Sunday. Let me rewind and go back because most of us praise God for Friday and most of us praise God for Sunday. But nobody dances about Saturday. Nobody shouts about Saturday. Brothers and sisters, we owe God a praise for silent Saturday. It was on Saturday nothing came from heaven and nothing came from earth. It was on Saturday in between places. It was on Saturday in transition. Shake your neighbor and tell him I made it through Saturday. I heard Jesus scream on Friday. I saw him on the cross on Friday. Saturday I didn't hear nothing. I didn't see nothing. But I made it through Saturday. Wave at somebody and ask him have you ever had a Saturday experience in your life? A dark place. A quiet place. Y'all won't help me preach silent Saturday. Preach it next year. Shake your neighbor and say God brought me through a silent Saturday. But oh, oh, hey, Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. The first type of church was Adam. The second type of church was Jesus, the body of Christ. So Satan thought it was really over. Glory to God. But Jesus got up and he filled us with the Holy Ghost. But the third type of a church is everybody in this room that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, I got the Holy Ghost. I am the church. Where y'all at? You're not the church because you signed a membership form. You need the Holy Ghost. You're not the church because you serve on a ministry. You need the Holy Ghost. That's what's wrong with y'all. We got imposters up in here acting like they got it, but you ain't got nothing. So you get the power down in your belly. Out of your belly shall flow. Y'all don't want to have no church. That's why y'all smoking weed and speaking in tongues because you need the Holy Ghost. That's why you're drinking communion juice and drinking because I see it. They drink that down here because you need tequila. That's what y'all drinking. Tequila. Y'all drink that down here? You need the Holy Ghost. Tell them we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. So I am, a, I am the church. Started the body of Adam. Y'all with me? The body of Jesus. But we are the body of Christ. The body of Adam. The body of Jesus. But we are the body of Christ. And God says, in this church, you must have influence. You must effect and change things. You must have impact. Oh, glory to God. A forceful, influential effect on something. You must infiltrate. I filled you with the Holy Ghost. Not to have good church services and musicals and teas and banquets and anniversaries. But I made you my church to infiltrate the earth. How? To saturate the earth with my power. To invade your city with my glory. How? To gain access into the enemy's camp that's holding down your city to expose the devil in your city and tell the devil we're taking this city back from you and we're putting it in the hands of the church. Do I have any leaders up in here that say I didn't come to play. I didn't come to just sing. I'm more than a singer. Where y'all at? I'm more than a dancer. I am the church. I'm here to influence impact, infiltrate. Pass that down your road. Tell your neighbor if you ain't influencing no lot of you're not the church you're here to influence. Come on, you're here to impact. You're here to infiltrate. I need somebody to shout it. Y'all ain't shouting it. Say we're here to influence, impact, infiltrate. The church, take y'all seat for a minute. Pray for me, please. The church, we're called to be shifters. So neighbor, we are the shifters. We're here to shift time, shift seasons through the power of the Holy Ghost. We are the fixers. Tell your neighbor, we are fixers. 
We're here to fix issues and fix problems. We're not crying about problems. God has raised us up to be solutionists. We are the solution. We have the solution. We have the answer to the famine. We have the answer to the problem in prison. We have the answer to the problem in education. And Jesus is the answer. Wave at somebody and tell them you are the church. You are a solutionist. You get happy when problems show up because that's your time to shine. You have been called to fix the problem. Fix it. Fix it. Shift it. Shift it. God has called us to shift an industry. Improve a system. Create something that will change the world. Discover something that will shift technology. Solve a problem that will shake the world. Invent something that will change the business industry. Produce something that will change medical science. Adjust something that will improve the world forever. Write something that will upgrade the entertainment industry. I am the church. Where is the church? I'm talking about a greater dimension. Y'all fighting over sheets and pillows and oil bottles and seats and titles. The devil is a lie. He says, I'm looking for a people that will influence, impact and infiltrate. The devil don't care nothing about your title and you don't have no function and you don't have no results and you don't have no work behind your title. God is looking for a church. Pass it down your role. Influence, impact, infiltrate. So some of us are stuck and we're stagnant. We're in what God was doing, but we're not in what God is doing. Yeah, he said that in 1996. Yeah, he said that in 2017. But what he said in 2017 is not the exact same thing he's saying in 2024. And sometimes he's saying the same thing, but he's doing it in a different way. We need the proceeding word of God. What would have happened to Abraham if he didn't listen to the proceeding word? He would have killed his son Isaac. God said, kill him. But while he got ready to kill him, another word came and said, oh, there's a ram in the bush. Y'all killing stuff that's supposed to be alive because we're stuck in the past and you need to remain in the isness of God. He spoke that to me in the hotel room. Wave at your neighbor and say, you need to remain in the isness of God. Ah, uh, you're where God has been, but you need to be in the isness. It come by uh, where he is and where he's going. The worst thing is to be doing what God said to do in the wrong season. And so in order to get to a greater dimension, we got to change. We got to change. Change is difficult, but it's necessary. Help me, Holy Ghost. Change is uncomfortable, but it's necessary. Change can be challenging, but it's necessary. Change is painful, but it's necessary. Change does not feel comfortable, but it's necessary. Change is necessary. When you're changing, it means you're growing. When you're changing, it means you're developing. When you're changing, it means you're progressing. When you're changing, it means you're evolving. When you're changing, it means you're becoming. And if you refuse to change, you will return to the past. Change or be changed. I need you to pass that down your row. Tell them change or be changed. I'm trying to come to the text. Glory to God. Come on, say it again. Change or be changed. God says, you need to write down some changes you need to make in your church. And when you go back home next week, as the Spirit of the Lord leads you and guide you to make those changes, that's why he has you here all this week to download into your spirit and to download into your heart because you got to make the change. Brothers and sisters, we've got to change. The church is different. It's not the same. The church is in the air. Wave at your neighbor and tell them the church is in the air. The Bible Bible says that we're fighting against the prince of the powers of the air. Who is that? It is Satan. Glory to God. He's not in the heavens. He's not the ruler of the heavens. He's not the ruler of the earth, but he's in between the heavens and the earth. He's the airspace. Glory to God. He doesn't even have a home, but just in the air. He's trying to run the air. He's trying to control the air. This is why you can't be stuck in the past talking about I ain't getting on Facebook. That's where the warfare is on social media. 
the church is online because the war is in the air. The enemy is talking to our people for six days a week and we only got one day a week. You better get you an Instagram account. You better get you a Facebook page. You better get you a TikTok something because you need to know what's going on. You need to know what to pray about. You, y'all, I can't get no help. Look at y'all sitting on me because you don't want to change. Tell your neighbor the church is in the air. It's in the air. The church, the church is a production. Just write it down. Don't mean mug me. But church is a production. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a production. It just is what it is. If you're doing a pre-show, it's a production. If you're turning on lights up and down, it's a production. If you've got sound, it's a production. you got video, it's a production. If it's music, it's a production. A post-show, it's a production. It's all right to have an anointed production. It's all right to have a powerful production. It's all right to have a production in the glory. So your neighbor church is a production. Church is a business. Stop getting frustrated over it. People want to be paid to do the job. It is what it is. I had to just go on and accept it. People in the world don't have a problem with it. But there's some positions in the church that have to be paid. Because if we're asking for all of your time, we got to pay you. And I'm believing God that every pastor will have enough money to pay your staff with benefits. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, I said every church with a kingdom vision, you need a full-time staff. I'm I said if they work full time for the devil why can't we work full time for the kingdom of God I prophesy full time staff with good benefits in the name of Jesus order and excellence I decree and declare your HR department I decree and declare your real estate department I prophesy your business department this is the hour that the church is a business it's got a business side and it has a spiritual side. Now the problem is those that are servants get confused with those that are staff and now they want to check because they're not getting a check. You got to know your assignment and you got to know your purpose. And they sit back and say, well, they get a check. Let them do all the work. I ain't getting nothing. But if you're a real servant of God, your check comes from God. That check comes from the United Nations. Y'all don't want to have no church. But those that serve him with gladness come before his presence with singing. When I go to the car dealership, because I serve in the house of God, he will remember me at the car dealership. When I serve in the house of God, when I sit at the table to close on my house, he's going to give me food favor. I need you to tell somebody God can pay you better than any institution, better than any man, better than any woman. You better not serve him because you will miss your pay from heaven. Give somebody a high five. Say God's going to pay us. He's, he's going to pay us. I'm trying to figure out how to close this. The church, the church, the church is a business. Shock your neighbor. Say the church is a business. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is what it is. It is what it is. The church needs teams. Prophesy down your row and say the church needs teams. You need to be delivered from insecurity. You need to be delivered from everybody needing to know you and call your name. You cannot be a one man show. God is sending people on your team that are more anointed than you, that are more gifted it than you and you must embrace them stop sabotaging the answer to your prayer see when you got low self-esteem and insecurity you will sabotage the gifted people but God sent them to help you wave at your neighbor and say God sending some people on your team they're gonna have more money than you they're gonna have more experience than you they're gonna have more education than you all I want to know is can you handle this next dimension can you handle this next dimension you are not gonna be the smartest one on your team you're not gonna be the strongest one on your team but you gotta know you are the leader mm. I feel the Holy Ghost in here Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost somebody shout because everything you need God is sending to your house I need y'all to open up your mouth I'm talking to the bishops I'm talking to the apostles I feel the shift in the Holy Ghost I'm trying to preach this thing but while I'm preaching he's showing me he's sending gifts to your house he's sending abilities to your house he's sending anointings to your house everything you need I need somebody to shout right here shout 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 for the CPA 
Shout for the CPA. Shout for the accountant. Shout for the expert in production. Shout, 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 shout. Shout for the event planner. Shout for the decorator. Shout everything you need. He's sending it to your house. Tell your neighbor, God's going to move through teams. Come on, tell him he's going to move through teams. Apostolic teams. Prophetic teams. Pastoral teams. Teaching teams. Evangelistic teams. We need a team of pastors that we can trust. Can I help y'all? Stop thinking that the problem in your church is the whole church. I'm going to help you save you some time. It's one group. The ministers. That's it. It's not the ushers. I've been doing it 45 years. I know now. It's not security. Lord have mercy. I love y'all. It's the ministers. It's them that's sitting up there. Line. You know, when these people come from other churches and they join our church and they say, I just want to hold your arms up. I just want to serve you. I just want to have your mantle. I said, stop lying. You want to pass. You want to come over here and learn all my stuff. You're going to stay for two years and you're going to be out. Now let's make a deal. I'm going to use you because you're gifted and I need you. And you're going to use me. And we're going to work this thing together. Touch your neighbor and say, tell the truth. And stop lying. You know you want to prophesy. I don't want to be no prophet. I just want to serve. Yes, you do. You can't get delivered if you don't. Tell the truth. You don't have to do no behind the scenes, sneaky rule stuff. That's what you did in the world. Don't bring that over here. Don't you know your apostle is big enough? See, when you come from a small-minded leader, they can't handle your gifts. But when you got an Apostle Orin Pullins and a Dr. Medina Pullins, their gift is high enough, wide enough, deep enough that it can handle your gift. Matter of fact, gifted people are called to this church. Tell your neighbor, gifted people are called here. That's why their power struggles, because we all gifted, we all anointed. We called here because he's got a strong mantle and he needs our assistance to bring it to pass. So be honest with yourself. We need teams and we got to work together. One more thing, one more thing, one thing. The church got to change. The church got to change. We need the right ministries in the church. It's just something to think about. Something to think about. We need the right ministry. You know, we still got the ushers and the security and the, the, the audio and the video. But I think it's time for some new ministries. Y'all may not agree with me, but I think we need the divorce care ministry. Don't y'all turn my mic off. We don't believe in divorce, but y'all getting them. And your children are confused. You're hurting. We need something in the church. Not that we are encouraging divorce because we believe in marriage according to the scripture. But if you went through that, you need to find healing in the house of God. That needs to be healing in here. Y'all ain't loud enough. I think we need more than the usher board. I think we need the anger management ministry. Because some of y'all after church punching holes in walls, cussing people out, putting up your middle finger, got a bet. We need real ministry. Somebody shout greater dimensions, greater dimensions, y'all. Y'all, greater dimensions. Lord, I ain't going to make it to this text. We need the mental awareness ministry. Because some of these people that's jumping around, running down the aisle are nuts. 
That ain't the fruit of the spirit. That's a fruit cake. We got some problems. In here, you got to have discernment so you can tell the difference. We need a ministry that deals with perversion. That deals with people who've been raped. People who've been molested. People in homosexuality. People in pornography. We need a real church. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. Look at y'all. Look. What did he say? That's what it's in your house. Don't act like that to me. If we can't find it here, where can we get help? Glory to God. I don't know where to go. Tell your neighbor, greater dimensions, greater dimensions. Woo! I didn't get to my text. Would y'all let me come back again? Let me come back again. I didn't get to the text. Bishop Brown would beat me. I believe in the Bible. I believe in the word of God. I'm going to leave you with this. I need a prophetic sound. Mm. On the keys, if y'all can. God shared something with me. He told me to share it tonight. He, he gave me, I told you the first type of church was Adam. Y'all remember? Second type of church was the body of Jesus. The third type of church is the body of Christ. The body of Adam, the body of Jesus, the body of Christ. Y'all got that? He told me to study Elijah. Now, I shouldn't be talking about this because I'm not finished. This is straight from my prayer room. I'm not finished with this. I got to study it some more. But God told me, Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. Can y'all hear me? And Elijah, E-L-I-S-H-A. They are a type of a church. Elijah and Elijah. He said to me, this is the apostolic prophetic church that I'm raising up in 2024. I want y'all to write this down. God, show me this. Wave at your neighbor. Say, Elijah and Elijah. Mm. A type of church with greater dimensions in the name of Jesus. I'm going to hurry up. Elijah and Elijah impacted government. Government. Elijah impacted government. I want y'all to write that down. When the kings were in trouble, he gave them advice. When they were in war, they went to Elijah for war tactics. When they needed direction, they went to Elijah. It was Elijah that heard the words of the enemy's strategy in his bedchamber. Somebody shout, this apostolic prophetic church is going to impact government. Can I get some help in here? Mm. This apostolic prophetic church it's going to impact government. Wave at your neighbor and say, you're going to impact the political industry. You're going to impact. Don't, don't, don't run from politics. Politics control things. We can't just stay in the church. We need leadership in government. I prophesy. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prophesy. I like you. Come on. Who is that? Glory to God. Somebody shout, this apostolic prophetic church is reigning in government. Y'all with me, Elijah and Elijah. This apostolic prophetic church is reigning in the educational industry. Way that your neighbors say God has given us power in the educational industry. It was Elijah that had the school of the prophets. It was Elisha that had a campus for the school. Not only did he have a campus, he had a dormitory and it was too small and they began to build a new dormitory that's when the axe head fell and God worked a miracle so they could expand the school wave at your neighbor and say this church shall impact the educational industry we will write curriculums we will write plans we will write books our children shall be delivered our children shall be made whole our children shall be set free because we are going to make a difference in the educational industry we're not just going to be a church clapping our hands and stomping our feet we're moving oh i need y'all to open up your mouth and shout 
I'm prophesying to every bishop. I'm prophesying to every apostle. I'm prophesying to every prophet. Get ready, get ready, get ready to impact the educational industry. Somebody type on YouTube. I shall impact the educational industry. I shall level your code. Hey, come on, shout in this one. Shout in this one. Tell somebody government. Tell somebody the educational industry. He said, we're going to impact religion. It was Elijah and Elisha that stood up against the God of Baal and Astro. Baal being the God of money, Astro being the God of sex. But he said, the God that answers by fire shall be the real God. And it was Elijah that prayed a 63 word prayer. And when he prayed, fire came down back. Keyboards only. Fire came down backwards. My God. And they destroyed the prophets of Baal. Glory to God. I need somebody to shout, God has given us labor in the religious industry. I'm almost finished. The medical industry. Shake your neighbor and say, we're going to impact the medical industry. The people were sick. The people were dying. God spoke to Elijah. They were dying because of the water. He said, put some salt in the water. And as they began to drink the water, I'm in the scripture. Everybody was healed because this apostolic prophetic church, we are not just going to sit back and fall out and be covered up with sheets. But God is going to give us solutions. Come on, y'all. God is going to give us power to affect the medical industry. I need somebody to shout, get ready to affect the medical industry. Get ready to create cures. Get ready to produce solutions. Get ready. I need y'all to shout at this Holy Ghost Church. Come on, lift up your shout. Lift up your shout. I know y'all want me to tune up and holler. But I heard God say, impact, infiltrate, impact, infiltrate, impact, infiltrate. Shout glory. Shout glory. Stand on your feet. Lift up your hands. Somebody shout, we're impacting government. We're impacting education. We're impacting religion. We're impacting the medical industry. He said, we're impacting the business industry. Tell your neighbor, God's going to teach you how to profit. Some of you are called to the marketplace. You're called to business. He says, you're going to impact the business industry. Y'all might be mad at me for not hollering, but the next time you see me, you're going to have more money than you ever had before. Because you are getting ready to infiltrate, mm, impact the business industry. It was Elisha. It was Elisha. They were, they were in a famine. There was a lack. There was a shortage. It was the prophet that said, by this time tomorrow, a measure of flour shall be sold for a shepherd. That's it. Let's go to work here. Two measures of barley for a shekel. There was a famine in the land. There was a shortage in business. But the prophet of God spoke one word. And within 24 hours, everything shifted. I need some prophets in here. I need somebody with an apostolic anointing. Tell your neighbor, open up your mouth and speak. And when you speak, within 24 hours, everything it's gonna shift. It's gonna shift. I need you to get 
something on your mind, you need God to shift. I need you to get something on your mind. You need God to change. You have the apostolic oil on you. You have prophetic oil on you. That's it. That's it, yo. Come. Open up your mouth and begin to speak right now. Don't wait till you get home. Open up your mouth. Speak to your family. Speak to your finances. Speak to your situation. Speak to your body. Speak to your church. Speak to your ministry. I need somebody to speak right now. You may not be a prophet, but you have a prophetic anointing. You may not walk in the office, but you are part of a prophetic house. Open up your mouth. Speak to your finances. Speak to the economy in your house. Speak. I need y'all to get out of your seat. Take your finger. Stop pointing. Stop pointing. Speak to your community. Speak. Speak. Come on, y'all. Give me that apostolic sound. Give me that prophetic sound. Give me that anointed sound. Shake Virginia with the sound. Shake it. Shake it. I feel something new. I feel something different. I feel something fresh. I feel something new. I feel something different. I feel something fresh. This is a different convocation. You ain't just gonna shout and holler. Fall on the floor and be covered up with a sheet. You gonna do business. You're coming out of debt. You're coming out of debt. You got strategy. You're gonna do business. Your church is paid in full. Property is coming to you. You're no longer a renter. You are owner. You own your home. You own your church. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. Come on, boys, y'all got it now. Hit me with that sound. I need y'all to break loose in this place. Tell your neighbor everything you just said, I decree and declare within 24 hours. Point to it. Say within 24 hours. My God, my God. Angels are being released. Angels are being released. Angels are being released. Come on, United Nations. Come on, shout. 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 The limits are breaking. Shout. Your mind is being expanded. Shout. The glory of God is with you. Shout. You're going to shake your city. Shake the 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 city. Be healed in your breathing. 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 Be healed in your lungs. Be healed in your lungs. Breathe in. Breathe out. No more shortness of breath. No more attacks in your lungs. Somebody shout. I feel the glory of the Lord sitting on this house like never before. What you pray for is coming to pass. What you pray for is coming to pass. What you pray for is coming to pass. You're gonna sleep at night. You will not wake up in the middle of the night. Your sleep will not be interrupted. You are healed. You are whole. When you go back to the doctor, they will not see what they saw. They will not find what they found. You're healed. You're whole. I cancel the surgery. I cancel the surgery. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout. Somebody shout. Your breakthrough is here tonight. Your freedom is here tonight. Your deliverance is here tonight. I have not forgotten about you. I have not forsaken you. I heal you. From the issues in your family, I heal you from parental issues. I heal you from deep-rooted rejection. God says, let it go. You will not leave this place rejected. I break the curse of rejection. I hear the Lord say rejection has controlled your life for the last years. It has controlled your relationships. It has controlled your friendships. Stay right there, boys. It controlled your family. But God said tonight, it breaks. You will not live with it. You know what I hear the Lord say? Now I want you to look at me, because it's going to be hard. You're going to have to 
do something. You're going to have to forgive. All you got to do is make a choice. It ain't going to take long. Within 20 seconds, all you got to do is say, I forgive. Yes. She said, I forgive. Come on. Just one more time. easy for you. That took a whole lot for her. God's going to put your life back together. He's going to heal the broken pieces. Heal the broken pieces. Heal, say of God. Listen, I hear the Holy Ghost. He says to you, because you chose to forgive, you're going to be the first in your family. The first to do some things. I need y'all to prophesy to this young lady and say, don't look at everybody else. Because you are the pattern. That's apostolic. You're going to be the first. See, y'all just putting this apostolic stuff in the church. It works in corporate. It works. There's some apostolic writers. There's some apostolic poets. There's some apostolic business owners. There's some... Are you listening to me? This is not just for the church building. God said you're going to be the first. The apostles are first. You're going to be the first in your family to accomplish some things that nobody in your family has ever accomplished before. I need y'all to praise God for her. Woo. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Your strength is coming back. Healing in your blood. Healing in your blood. Everywhere there's weakness. Everywhere there's tiredness. I don't understand it, but sometimes you walk and you're tired. Sometimes you walk and you run out of strength. But God is healing your blood. He's healing your blood. He's giving you new strength. You're going to be able to run and not get tired. You're going to be able to walk. In the name of Jesus, heal this body. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, I decree the healing hand of God. Look at me. You're such a sweet lady. I don't know you, but I see a sweet lady. And God said, You've been hurt deeply because you've been so nice to everybody. You didn't know how to say no, but you should have said no. And they took advantage of you. But God says, I'm healing you today. Mm. I'm giving you strength say no when you need to. You hear me? I give you, they not going to run all over you and take advantage of you. God gave you everything you got that you let nobody do that to you. May you rise in strength. May you rise in power. May you rise in dominion. And may your heart be healed from all those situations. Somebody open your mouth and shout out to God. We got to get out of here. I can shout out to I feel glory. Ah, I feel glory. Take me to church for two seconds now. Come on, church. I got to go. This is my first time here. I'm too long. But I feel glory. I feel glory. I'm almost through. We're looking at your watch. I feel glory. your neighbor and say, I feel glory. You're going to do ministry in the glory. You're going to do business in the glory. You're going to succeed in the glory. It's not going to be so hard because the glory is going with you. You're going to graduate with your degree because the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. I said the glory. I said the glory. Somebody praise him for the glory. I said, praise him for the glory. I like this church. I feel at home now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I be 
somebody to clap your hands real fast and shout glory. Praise him. Just for 60 seconds, praise him. Praise him. We're going home, but praise him. presence. Your blood pressure is being healed. You. Your numbers are changing. The devil ain't gonna do. Excuse me, sound man. Hold me up. But God told me to stand up on this speaker. 
to stand over you, to tell you God has taken authority. He's taken dominion over every sickness, over every disease, over every demon that's attached to it. You will not die premature death. You're going to live to complete your purpose. You're going to live to complete your assignment. I command your blood pressure to come in line. I command your numbers to change. I release your miracle in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Told me to bring miracles. 
Bishop Orrin Pullins, I wrote this because I want to say it like God gave. Turn the track off just in one moment. He says, you're going to start moving and flowing apostolically like you've never done before. He says, he's sending in new sons and daughters that you can trust. He said, you went through a season that you were not able to trust. But God said, I healed you from that season. And now I'm sending in new sons and new daughters that are trustworthy. He says, this is the time you need to write the manuals. There's coming a new structure in United Nations. And so it cannot be transferred with word of mouth. It cannot be transferred just on Zooms. It has to be, come on, come on, come on. Stay there, stay there, stay, stay, stay. It has to be transferred in manuals. The Lord says you're gonna still plant churches. He says he's already gave you the strategy. I, I heard the West Coast, and I heard the South, and I heard overseas. And the last instruction God gave me for you is call the city together. You have the mantle. They will respect it. They will come. I don't know what you're going to do, but you're too into the United Nations. He's called you to greater. He's called you to stretch. You are a gatekeeper of this city. And when you call them, they will respond. You're thinking too hard. The city is yours. You're a man of integrity. You're a man of honesty. You're a man who has sustained the test of time. And God said it's your time. That, see, there's going to have to be a citywide move here. I don't know what's going to happen. But there's going to need to be a citywide move that's going to unify Virginia. Not based on no denomination and religion. 
but on the kingdom of God. And you're one of those gatekeepers that will call them together. And there shall be revival. And there shall be shakings and blessings in this city. In Jesus' name. Dr. Medina, I just got to say this like God gave me. Thank y'all. Keep that up there. The Lord told me your assignment in life is media. He said, I'm going to give you the mountain of media. You're not going to move from church to church, from place to place. But you're going to do it through media. I give you the wisdom of media. The gates of media. The doors of media. You will sit at the tables with decision makers in media. The shaking in the world is no accident. Incredibles! This is a kingdom shaking because God is shifting seats and he's putting his people in the seat. God said, even in your 80s, you'll be in media. He said, you were born for this. Touch the world with your voice. Now, I've been knowing you for over 25 years. But God showed me something. You may already know it. i never seen it. He said, tell her, media. Then he told me to look at your name. M-E-D-I-N-A. He said, there's only one letter that's stopping your name from being media and that's the end if you move the end your name is media God gave me this so this is your prophetic word he says take the end out and put the end in front in media that's you that in my life. Point to the woman of God and say, in media. Destroy the kingdom of darkness. In media. Go to the nations. In media. Bring the kingdom of God. In media. Somebody shout. I need y'all to shout. Hey, I don't know what I'm giving you your son. Technology. Technology belongs to the woman of God. Cameras belong to the woman of God. Studios belong to the woman of God. She was born in media. Clap for Apostle Medina. I ain't never heard nothing like that. I'm through. Touch your neighbor and say, in media, in media, in media. Everybody stand up. With your seed in your hands. I don't have a hundred bishop, but I got 50. I want you to come down. I want y'all to release that word. Come on. In media. That's your prophetess. So what's on him and what's on her is on you. I didn't have a pastor to say, in media, our church is going to thrive. Huh? In media. Our church is going to grow. Our church is going to expand. Y'all got to turn my mic on. Those that can give 50, come. Those online, I need you to talk to me. If you're giving on YouTube, you're giving on Facebook, I need to know you're sowing. Tell me you're sowing 100. Tell me you're sowing 100. Everybody get something in your hand. Come down. Come out of your seat. Come down. Don't go. I'm going to pray. Come down. Come down. Come down. I'm going to pray. And you're just going to put your offering on the steps. Touch the phone with your steps. Father, in Jesus' name, 
I decree and declare supernatural financial breakthrough. Debts canceled. Doors open. Faith and release. We break every curse of not enough. We thank you that we're sowing tonight for the apostolic prophetic anointing. We shall be the church. We shall influence, infiltrate, and impact. And we're sowing our seed tonight. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Put it on the steps and give God praise. Let's receive our apostle in the name of Jesus. As you return to your seat, say greater dimensions, greater dimensions, greater dimensions, greater dimensions. Somebody ought to receive that right there. Greater dimensions. Great. I don't see y'all saying it. Greater dimensions is my portion. Somebody clap those hands for greater dimensions. God for that rich, 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 rich word tonight released by none other than Archbishop William Hudson. Come on, can we thank God for him? Come on, we can do better than that. That was a rich, wealthy, powerful, life-changing, dominion-taking, greater dimensional word. Somebody say, I receive it all. Thank you, sir. Can we thank the Lord for all that he's done at this second night of Holy Convocation 2024? Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Listen, before tonight, some of us need to go back and watch this live again because that word was very rich. Take notes because that's your now and your future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to say too much because the Lord is so heavy in this atmosphere. I do have to say that on tomorrow, we'll be here at 12 noon for the prophetic class and the evangelism class. Everyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need that impartation tomorrow. We'll be here at 12 noon sharp. So we're asking that everyone will be right in the sanctuary. Apostle Lee Savini and Apostle Paul Date will be teaching us and imparting it to us. Come on, can we praise God for them? Tomorrow evening, 5 o'clock, somebody say 5 o'clock. Credentialing, if you have not completed your credentials, we will be here at 5 o'clock for you to complete your credentials. We have talked about it, we have ministered about it, so please, please make sure that you complete your credentials. Those that are being elevated and those that are already bishops, apostles, and ministers and deacons, everyone, if you have a title within this fellowship, you must be credentialed. You must be credentialed. Touch your neighbor and say, you must be credentialed. You must be credentialed. And tomorrow is the final closeout for the credential. That's the last day that we can complete that. So please be here at 5 p.m. tomorrow while we continue that. Also tomorrow, we'll be in civic attire for the Friday night service. Amen. As Dr. Todd Hall will be with, him, with us tomorrow night preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we want to invite you, you to invite a neighbor and a friend on Saturday. It is our official elevation service. None other than our chief apostle, Bishop Orrin Keith Pullins, will be ministering Saturday. Come on. The youth service. Let me hear the young people make some noise. Yeah. There's a takeover happening. Somebody say takeover. 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Let me tell you, they're going to turn this city right side up. Amen. The young youth and the young adults will be here. If you know of any young people, we invite you to bring them here. Their lives will never be the same. These young people are on fire, and we're seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. They're coming from all over. So 7 p.m. sharp on Saturday evening will be our young adult service right here in the sanctuary. And then on Sunday, it is our closeout service. We'll be here closing it out, shouting unto the Lord, and sealing up all that the Lord is doing in this convocation. I'm gonna ask that everyone would stand because I don't wanna keep rambling because God is still moving. He's still moving. He's still moving. Amen. Amen.
again. And out of all the shouting and praising God, you might need a ride home. Somebody has shouted their keys out of the way, and they will have it over here. Uh, the men of God will have it over here. If you have lost your keys, check your pocket. You know, sometimes we can get drunk.